What's happening? It's Contrast Uncut. It's season three, episode 40. Man, big shout outs to Uncle Snoop's Army and Bobby D Presents. I appreciate you, brothers. It's your host, Zylo, aka DJ Juan Dollars, like I won some money. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a really, really incredible special guest. You know, he's from Greensboro, North Carolina. He's a veteran television producer, filmmaker, and entertainment industry executive. He's a founder and CEO of Du Bois Entertainment and Du Bois Music Group. This brother's been in the game for almost 30 years. He's a head programming and executive producer at Fox Soul. He's an example of some, here's an example of some of the brother's portfolio as an executive producer. I mean, from Wags Atlanta, from the bottom up, Keisha Cole, the way it is, Keisha and Daniel family first. I mean, the brother's done short films. Uh, with Diggy Simmons, Season of the Tiger, been a part of the history from Run's House, Monica's Still Standing, I mean, the Michael Vick Project, this brother's done so much. I mean, Pete Diddy presents the Bad Boys of Comedy and Comic View and many, many more. I mean, if anybody should look into the entertainment world and look at a blueprint of, you know, what success looks like, make sure you look up James Du Bois. Hey, how you doing, brother? I appreciate you coming on the show. Good blessings, brother. How you doing? Man. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. I can't complain, man. You know, at the end of the day, we just trying to progress daily and, you know, stay on the, the dedication of, you know, making something happen. Absolutely. Stay the course, my brother. Stay the course. Absolutely. You got to keep yeah. that tunnel vision. You know, the way how the world works, sometimes there's potholes, sometimes there's speed bumps. And, you know, the blessing is that you got other people with testimonies and experiences that help you avoid some of those potholes and speed mm -hmm. bumps. Yeah, no, absolutely. We all we all the teachers. That's how I look at it, man. We all can learn something from each other, for sure. Absolutely. I can't wait to go through this whole episode and then soak it yeah. as much knowledge as I can. I tell people yeah. all the time, you know, it's cool to be the fly on the wall, but it's better to be the sponge that soaks it all. Yeah, and I, you know, my journey has it's, it's been a roller coaster, man. I love to share it just for that, just for that point. Hopefully, somebody can learn something from me. That's. That, to me, that's that's our purpose. That's why we should be here. You know, it's, it's to try to guide and help one another, be it directly or indirectly. That's the point. Amen. Yeah. So I got this quote. You know, let me know how this quote relates to you, or if it doesn't. The idea is to get you to talk about it. It's my icebreaker. So here we go. Man's greatness consists in his ability to do and the proper application of his powers to things needed to be done. Frederick Douglass. A great quote, brother. <laughs> Love that. Uh, you know, uh, to, to add to that, I think what, what that means to me is to do is is the greatest application is to is to get up from, from your fall, brother. Right? It's to be able to have the, the strength um, to get up. Because you take a man like the great Frederick Douglass or a lot of people, honestly, that, that we consider successful, if you will, or whatever success is, the definition for that particular individual. I always say that people look at like the Jay-Z's and the Puffy, they look at them now, but they don't see the journey or the Denzel's or anybody that you may look up to, even, um, you know, Zuckerberg and all them. It, it's, it's, the, it's the journey, man. It's the falls that really is the measure of a man. And, and being able to do the necessary things to start that climb up the mountain again. Because it takes, it's, it's, it's longer to get up and, 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 and it takes a short time to come back down. But the, the measure of a man in doing, what I find in that quote, is how do you find the strength to start that hard climb up again? Yes, no, you're absolutely right. Again, and then at the same time, you gotta think about from the beginning. So many people are afraid of success. They're afraid of the opportunity to change their lives. They're afraid of it. So they won't even apply their God-given gifts. And you know, they're at that wall like, man, I could be doing that. I'm better than them. And then don't do nothing to apply themselves to make it work in the beginning. And you know, the power that needs to be done is to apply yourself, no matter what. No, absolutely. It's a you know, I, I don't know if people are afraid of success, honestly. I think they don't really feel like they deserve it. And, and, and to me, that is the most powerful thing in the world. Because if we, if, if once you get to success or whatever that is, again, if you have success at anything you do, you normally go all out for it. Getting started is the hard part because a lot of us coming from where we come from don't think we deserve it. 
don't think we're worthy. Don't don't think success is really for us, even though we talk about it and we look at it. So we get we seem to get more out of watching other people's success that have somehow been told by their parents or their friends or their faith in in, in, in their God is that they are worthy, man. And I think when and what I try to do is remind people that they are kings and they are queens and that you are worthy. And when you realize you're worthy of something. The work is easy at that point. <laughs> work is easy. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? I, you know, I will admit to it. I have been afraid of success for, you know, I never thought about it in that perspective. And, you know, I come from the poverty stricken neighborhoods where, you know, you see a few people make it out, but they either may come right back or they, you know, you never hear about them again. Right. And you know you don't get that blueprint, that recipe of success into the community, so that other people can enhance their livelihood. And you know, like I said, I was a victim. I, I put, I lived in a cul-de-sac state of mind, and you know, I got in trouble and all type of fun things, and I wasn't able to build that bridge over that cul-de-sac to make it happen. And you know, along the way, it took people to recognize and push me, so that I got start getting bricks from other places to lay the foundation to build that bridge. Mm -hmm. And you know, here I am today. I'm gliding. But at the same time, I'm, I'm still surviving. I'm not thriving. And, you know, there's a big difference in, in one to two to three. <laughs> right. You, uh, I will beg to differ. I think you are thriving, but I don't think you're just surviving. And, and honestly, in the emails, when you, were, when you were reaching out to see if I would be a part of the program, I read a lot of the words that you were sending to, to, to my office. And I appreciate the humbleness in terms of, of, of you saying it would be an honor to have me, but... I want you to know it's an honor for me to be here and that that as you were looking at me, I was looking at you and you were just as worthy as anybody out there to have myself and, and other people. Not that I think I'm, you know, some some great thing. I'm just, I'm just humbled enough, man, that you would even think enough for me to do that. But I want you to also know that your worthiness comes from what you're doing, brother. We all make our mark in some way. So, so, so and just in that regard, Again, I don't think you're afraid of success or you wouldn't be doing this. You wouldn't have done as many episodes as you have and you wouldn't continue to stay in the court. I just think you need to change the mindset to know that you actually are worthy for this and a whole lot more. Mm. You know, you smacked me with some wisdom. You didn't leave no marks, but it hit my soul. <laughs> yeah. That's good, man. Yeah, you. Uh, that's it, man. We have to uplift each other. We have to remind each other that we're worthy of everything that God has for us, man. Because, uh, again... We, you know, a lot of us, and I don't know your, 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 your faith background, but, you know, in the word it says, asking you shall receive, seeking you shall find, knocking the door shall be open, right? Amen. And a lot of us, we hear the other part that we're going to be punished for our sins and all that. We believe in that. We believe wholeheartedly that we shall be punished for our sins, but we don't believe in the word that says, seeking you shall find. So why we won't believe that? It, it wouldn't be in there. If we're going to believe in God, then we got to believe the totality of his word. You know what I mean? So, so keep seeking and keep knocking and keep and, 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 and keep asking, and you'll get it. You gotta believe that too. And I just want to keep reminding people, especially us, of um of that, brother. So, so that that that's really what I what what, what I'm here for and what I want to try to do for everybody, the uplifting and everybody. You know what's amazing is that normally it transpire on the show that we get into the history and the inspiration hits there. But from the very beginning, you have inspired me on my show. I think this is the first time ever where I got goosebumps from just the dialogue that we started with and, and the amount of energy being, you know, transparently crossed. And I appreciate you. I, you know, let me go ahead and let me dig in because I, I feel like digging on to me. And, and Let's you know, do it, man. I got you. <laughs> and and I want the listeners to know, you know, exactly what values we have by having this brother on here. And, you know, talking about the entertainment industry, did the game choose you or did you choose the game? Well, again, when I was going through my troubles, and that's a great question, man. Like, somebody reminded me, entertainment didn't choose me, I chose it. This is the field I chose to be in, right? Um, and if I may, because I don't know, I know you have a list of questions that you need to do, but I just have to be transparent in my message. You know, I think it's very, very important. Um, entertainment business is a lot of things, man. For me, it's like any other job, though. I just don't don't look at it as that. If, if you love what you do, you have a passion for it, you're going, you're going to maintain, you're going to go for it, right? But 
you know, there's a quote that says, and I know I, I, the uh, all the things that I had done that you read off, um, which is great. I appreciate that. But wasn't but wasn't read off was all the failures and the falls that I've had, right? Um, that's what I didn't hear. And to me, those are the most important part. It's, I can say that today. And somebody, you know, I've had a, a great deal of success. And a lot of times people say, it's, it's the, you know, you're in the right place at the right time. And I, I that's not true anymore for me. What, what it is, you got to be the right person at the right place at the right time. Yeah. Because a, a blessing given too soon ain't a blessing at all, man. And the worst thing that happened to me, brother, success, success at, the, at that particular time was the worst thing that could have happened for me. It was the worst thing that could have happened for me because I wasn't prepared for it. I didn't, I hadn't, I had some internal issues that I hadn't resolved. And success actually brought those out in a way that I, instead of growing on my success and building on that, I spent the majority of my years trying to hide the pain, trying not to be seen. Um, and that's the worst feeling in the world. So when you speak of entertainment, all the things you've heard about it, it could get you as a, as a, as a, as a industry full of culture vultures, not culture vultures, full of vultures, snakes and so forth. Um, but what I learned, if there's no enemy within, the enemy on the outside can do you no harm. You Ooh. understand? And, 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 no, you can uh, uh, and until you, you got to make sure you have yourself together, man. And, and there's a lot of brothers and sisters out here that are talking about their struggles, be it depression, anxiety, mental health, and so forth. Um, and I'm one of them um, because it, it really was an issue for me. And until I got that resolved, I, I, you know, it wasn't success at all, man. It, it was actually a curse. So at what point did, you know, you get a confirmation that, you know, the, the curse would be reversed? you know, that what your success will outweigh all of your battles so that you can work out and iron the communication of, of you know, of gracing that path. Um, when I stopped hiding. And, 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 and the only reason I was able to stop hiding is because someone saw me. Someone saw me. Someone that knew me and was, and, and this young lady said to me, I'm not gonna call her name. She was, she was the president of a network at the time and she called me in the office one day and was like, quote unquote, I love you, I know you. I'm not gonna pay for your funeral, so I'm gonna pay for you to go to, to get help. And that moment right there, not only saved my life, um, but it gave me the opportunity to stop, to stop hiding. But then even after that, even I got out of that, that, that facility, being who we are, being accustomed to not having to show vulnerability of weakness, I still was lying to myself um, for for another year and a half until it all just sort of came crashing down, man. And and and, and it wasn't success that made me; it was rock bottom that made me, brother. Rock bottom is what made me. I think the accountability of rock bottom has really molded you into you know the stellar person we have today. Because, you know, when you're at your bottom, you can either continue to fall or you can go ahead and start gathering what you have and start assembling what you can do. Now, absolutely. Um, you know, I, for a while I moped and, and I complained and I felt like a victim and I did all those things that human nature has us to do when you when you hit rock bottom. Um, and I thought God didn't love me, thought I was being punished forever, all, all the things that go to your head. Um, but at some point it did turn that I realized that rock bottom was actually the biggest blessing I ever had. And, 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 and that is when I started to really understand my purpose here, my purpose in this business, my purpose on this earth, um, and being able to teach through my, through my struggles and my trials than rather through my successes. You can't learn much about my successes, to be honest with you, because my journey, your journey, all of our journeys, uh, is going to be different to success, but the fall feels the same. <laughs> right, the fall feels the same. It hurts. Absolutely, the face of adversity and the obstacles to overcome. You know, it may not be the same adversity another one faces. It may not be the same obstacle another one faces. They may have certain ingredients that you have in yours, but they're completely different. And you know, the main thing to understand is that you have to continue striving. You have to keep on going. 
because if, if you know i can't imagine what you'd be doing if you just said oh i give up this is it no absolutely and and, and to do that you know you got to have a great circle you know, you've got to have a great team around you like like there was a message um T. jake said once about you could be the best seed in the world but if you keep putting that seed in bad soil it's not going to blossom and our soil is our environment. Our soil is the people that's around us. Right. So until we until we bring the right people around our environment, which is our soil, we're not going to ever blossom. Greatness is never a one man show. You know, there's something I want to bring up in there just because you brought it up in that mm -hmm. statement. And it's important to forgive yourself and forgive others when you go ahead and move on from that that air that that atmosphere of toxic relationships. You know, the key thing to do in that environment is to forgive yourself, forgive them and move on. It don't matter how they take it. You have to do it for yourself mm -hmm. and then you'll continue to grow. No, I, absolutely. And that was another hard part for me is that I only recently forgave myself um, for, 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 for everything only because it is the perception that you have of yourself. It is it's the vision that you have of yourself that is the hardest part in the world. Like I beg for forgiveness for people that I may hurt during my trials um, or, 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 or what have you, but forgiving yourself is the hardest part in the world. To look in the mirror and have to say everything you've been through, it was caused by these hands. So when you can't point the finger to no one else, you don't have a, a, a crutch to lean on or alibi. The only alibi is the man you're looking at in the mirror. It's a hard thing to do sometimes. But when you get through that point, it is not only freedom, um, it's not only the path to back to being your greatest self, but it's also being able to talk to brothers like you in an open forum that we, I don't have to hide anything, man. It's just, this is what I've been through. These are some of the mistakes I've made. Those mistakes are also could, could, could let you forget the good that you've done, the good, the successes that you've had. Um, and you can never forget that because one of my therapists has told me, look what you accomplished injured. It's like Kobe, it, 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 it's like, look what you could do when you're whole. And I'm yet to be whole, but I'm working towards that. You understand? It's like, it's like a football player running back, running for 200 yards in a game on an injured ankle. Imagine if he was whole, he'd probably get a 400 yards. So right. that's what I mean. I've been injured most of my life. Bro. No, it, and you know, to a degree it is a handicap, because, you know, you're not seeing the same playing field as the others. You know, you're dealing with stuff, but you know, the ability of us resilient men, we don't allow other people to know what's really bothering us. We try to, you know, keep it behind us. We try to keep this moving forward, what's in front of us. And, you know, there, there are times where, like we're talking about now, you know, the Achilles will blow. And, you know, you still got to walk over there and shoot those free throws and walk off the court. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. You just have to, um... You know, the conversation you have with yourself every day is the most important conversation you're going to have. You know, I will tell you this from experience. You know, there was a time where I quit my job and, you know, I took a whole leap of faith and I was being told about this person they see every day. And, you know, I didn't see it. I thought it was a cloudy mirror because, you know, I knew it was in there. I knew it was in there. I, I, I know all the experience I had, but it's amazing how once you can actually see and go through the process and see yourself that everyone else sees. And, you know, I feel like we're talking about that same thing with you. Yeah, uh, I just had to feel, I just had to stop worrying about what everyone else saw, though. Because yeah. they see it, they see it from their perspective. But I got to live with me every day. I, I could never get away from my shadow. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. <laughs> no matter how long that sun is, no matter how short yeah, the shadow yeah, is. Yeah. So, so I, I, you know, I have to... Um, I have to constantly remind myself that I am great, that I am a king and I am worthy and I, am, I have a gift, a yes, gift that, that, that the world needs. Absolutely. And it's okay to say that because I know where my gift comes from, you know, come from on. the most high. And I know who, who gives and who takes away now. Come on, come on. You, you, you preach it to yeah. the choir, but at the same time, yeah. we need people to start joining this choir and start, you know, rehearsing more and start being more prepared for what life has to give you because you're, it's in you. It's already the gift was given. Yeah. You have to reach it, obtain it, and, and keep on. Here we go, thriving. Yeah. There ain't no book you can read about life, man. <laughs> there's, no, there's no blueprint, you know, for everybody. That's that's the key of it. 
and that's why you got to constantly work on yourself every day, man. Um, you know, the folks, we all run a business, you know, uh, we all are entrepreneurs at the end of the day. And that entrepreneur is you incorporated. Yes. You, if you can't run yourself, there's no way you ever going to successfully run a business. You may have success for a bit, but eventually it's going to fall down. So the first business you ever going to run is you. Right. And you have to think about that. Right? You got to have you right. If you can't sell a product, or let me let me run that back. If you can't sell yourself, you can't sell a product. You can't, you know, you can't get what you think off the ground to move forward. It takes an engine and a vehicle to go from place to place. And sometimes it's your feet, sometimes it's your mind. Sometimes you literally create a vehicle or you create a plane. And you know, it's important that you take your mindset and adjust and keep on adapting until you know you get the surreal reality that you deserve. Absolutely, man. Your, your inner world will create your outer world. Whatever you feel inside is going to eventually show itself on the outside. Absolutely. So true. Don't, have, don't have forget that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And let me ask you, Mr. Du Bois, I got to ask, I got to ask. We talked a lot about your lows. What is, would you consider your highs from, you know, your career thus far? Um, that I've been blessed enough, man, to put a lot of people in position to better their lives better themselves like it ain't about a, it ain't about a tv show it ain't about this that and the other it, it's the fact that when the cameras go off and the lights go out and they all will for everybody i've been able to see people have their life grow continue to grow so that's the greatest blessing for me man like um you know i feel like the michael vick project was probably one of my favorites and it was because of we gave him a platform to have his own voice. Everyone was talking for him and talking at him and thought they knew his, his, his feeling. And I remember Cody said to me in Atlanta, before we started shooting, he was like, James, I had so much money, I didn't think I needed God. Um, and, 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 but then he changed, he, he realized just how the era of his ways and to see that man come out of that situation, man, and see what he's doing now. Again, I'm not saying it has anything to do with the fact he did that project, but I know we started to give him a voice and he started to find his, his, his self. He started finding his way. And so things like that, um, it's the greatest, uh, that's my success at all, man. It's how I could be able to serve and help other people through my gift. That, that's, the, that's the greatest success I've ever had. Thank you, thank you. Because, you know, it's so important that people embrace what they have and, you know, have a testimony of not so much of, you know, the accomplishments of, of the awards and what people are perceiving as, as success is more so of, you know, what you just said right now, the testimony of how, helping people change their lives and discover their path. Yeah, I, I want to, uh, you know, when I'm dead and gone, man, I just hope I, I want to be a tree that has so many branches that people could say I, I, I was the James Dubose tree helped me get to where I am. I want to have a million faces on the branches, man, that I've been able to, in some way, shape, or form, um, enhance their life. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, you know, with shows like Run House and being Bobby Brown and, of course, the Keisha Cole reality show, would you say that you gave the blueprint of what urban reality TV is today? Uh, nah, you know, I, I'm not going to go that far. And, you know, uh, I mean, Run's House was really a, somebody else's show. I just happened to be working for Bad Boy at the time with Puff. So Jason Carbone was really the brains behind that show. Uh, I was just working for Bad Boy at the time. So I want to make sure I, that that is yeah. that is corrected and clear that, that, that Jason Carbone deserves all the credit for that. I had nothing to do with that, right? I just happened to be working for Bad Boy. And that was part of the shows that Puff was involved in at the time. So I want to clarify that. Um, but also... Um, the Keisha Cole project, that was my first project ever, right? And I felt like at the time, with, 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 with all due respect to everybody, I think I think the real world and something else, I think Little Kim and, and the DMX first show was starting to come out. But I felt like, like, like for, for, for as urban, that was the first show that really started that, 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 that trend of opening up and being honest about your life as a celebrity. I mean, don't forget, Keisha Cole was already a platinum album when we met and did her show. She was already um, a star in that regard. Yes. But all I really heard was, you know, she may be this or she may be that or what have you. And when I met her, I saw a different world. I saw a different young lady that had the weight of the world on her shoulders. And I felt like 
telling her story if people really knew who she was and what she was fighting every day, the majority of the world could identify with her and they would have a greater appreciation for who she is and what she's dealing with. And I think because she was so open and trusted me so much to tell her story, that people gravitated to that show. And then after that, you know, I think I, I think we did set, I don't want to say the blueprint because everyone has their creativity, but I did think we set the standard for the realness in reality TV. Yes. Nothing was scripted in that regard. Um, and I think the gift I had, and if you look at, if I may, the Keisha Cole series, Tiny and Toya, Mike Vick, Monica, all that, if you honestly look at it, I sort of always found people when they were on their, I don't want to say down trail, but they weren't as, 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 as in the public eye successful as, as, as they are. They've already climbed. They've they already climbed. So it's not like it's a redemption story and that kind of stuff, but they were going, they were fighting trials. And I felt like I could see myself in all those shows. So in me, I was just strictly telling my story through, through those people though, because they were dealing with some of the same things that I was dealing with. I just was never going to go on TV like that. So I was able to set it to them at the, at the same time. So that was really the blessing, man. And I, and, and I think we're starting to get back to that right now in terms of reality is people really want the real now. They want somebody that's going to be open and transparent about their life so that they could be entertained, educated, and inspired and not just entertained. Absolutely. You know, testimonies and based on a true story, is you know really important for people to understand that you know going through something you're not alone you may go through it on your own recognizance but it's a different story when you have someone that hey i fell through the mud and got up and you know i washed myself off and kept it going and this is where i'm at look yeah yeah no 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 doubt man so i'm blessed now um it's so funny how carl worked god's a funny guy man. <laughs> but he's hilarious i've dreamed one of my uh, college roommates who I played ball with, uh, once I got Fox Soul, sent me a text saying, you always talked about having your own network, right? Even in college, because I, I, I just wanted to tell our stories. And, and so I say, I thought it was done, you know? I, I thought myself, after going through the trials in the fall, I thought it was washed, but haven't been able to come back and, and, and create Fox Soul as a platform for our people and be able to tell our stories raw, unfiltered, unedited. Um, that is the greatest step in, in, in the next thing. That's why I say God knew what my heart was and what I wanted to do is just like, he's funny. He's like, I'm gonna let you completely, everything I've been through prepared me for this moment. So I could personally say I'm actually grateful because um, I wouldn't be able to handle this task. And this ain't about me. Like I feel the weight of the community because we don't have this platform for us right now. And I mean, black, brown, or what have you. Um, and I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have probably been able to do it, brother, if I hadn't gone through what I've been through. That's why I say God is amazing. He's funny. He's a funny. He's funny. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah he has a great. unique way of yeah, yeah, yeah. You think I'm he's trying to kill you at first, but but he's not, man. He's trying to he, he, he's trying to cleanse you, sharpen you, brother. Something I learned from Kobe Bryant is that you gotta enjoy the process of the struggle because once you overcome, you're not gonna have that same struggle again. No, nah, it's really the process and not the destination. Because I'm sure you can relate to it. We all, once we get to the destination, we're thinking of another destination to go to. Yes, sir. So, so it's the journey, it's the process for sure. Absolutely. No, ceiling of complexity is real. And you know, for, for most people that don't like the walls closing in on them on everything they're doing and want to keep on growing and stretching, you know, you keep on finding ways to, to you know, get another stream of income or get another hobby or something to do to change the world, change right. your neighborhood, right. change your community. Right. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take a pause on the entertainment questions. I'm gonna go ahead and go into my awareness section. And uh, here we go. So, you know, I have my awareness segments about police interaction. You know, it's a big hot topic right now, but I've been talking about this for a long time because I've been, a, once again, a victim of not knowing what to do in the situation. And so I said, let me add this to my platform of, you know, for everyone to have this ability to not only hear it from my testimony, but everyone I interview you know what their interactions were and you know specifically i'm talking about 
when the red and blue lights hit, the high beam hits the back of the neck and searches for everyone in the car and we're getting pulled over. And, you know, I asked my guests when was the last time they were pulled over and what's some advice they can give to somebody in the situation of being pulled over? Um, I was pulled over maybe uh, about a year ago and, and just for a traffic, you know, um, wrong turn or something like that, I recall. And the, and the cop actually said, gave me a warning and let me go, right? And it was a white police officer. Um, but through all this, first of all, let, let me be very clear. Sometimes it don't, for the majority of the time, it doesn't matter what you do. When they see people like us, they're going to treat us like, like, like we are nobodies, right? So, so that's the first, we have to understand that. And unfortunately we have those people out there that would treat us like that. They just don't, don't matter. Everything can be in order. You could, think of the Rashard Brooks situation in Atlanta. You could be extremely uh, cooperative. You could speak the right way to them. Now, I don't know, and we don't know everything, but from what I've seen, that was, well, period. That never should have happened, first of all. When the brother offered to leave his car, offered to walk, he offered everything. Like, what more could he have done? You know, so there's just certain things that, fortunately, there's nothing we could do. You know, I do want to add one thing that, you know, and I, I'm, I'm not trying to contrast too much, but there's one yeah. thing you could have done, and someone taught me this. They yeah. said, you know, when you notice the officer is getting aggressive, you notice that he keeps on going, prolonging. Say, take me to jail. I, I, I hear that part, man, but sometimes, imagine waking up for 23, 25 years, 30 years of, of, of your life, and all you really see is how, how the police and so forth treat us like, like nothing, right? Um, and then you expect us to just remain calm when we know we've given you what you asked for, but yet you keep pushing us. Sometimes it's human nature, man. It's hard just to remain, to think logically at that particular moment or what have you. Um, you know, we wake up every day now. And if you don't remind each other that we are kings and queens, the images can make you think we're less up. And this is only a few weeks this has been happening. So we wake up in fear, bro. And, 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 and the quote was, like, we can never be unarmed because our blackness is the weapon that they fear. Spikes. You understand? So, so I understand you could have said, take, but when you just frustrated, and again, you understand the condition the brother was in that particular night. He was trying to say, let me walk, let me leave my car. But you know, you're not thinking like that. And sometimes I think cops, man, know how to push our buttons. And they just, they just try to just push us instead of being human themselves. All right, we understand you've maybe been drinking too much. Cool. Leave your car, walk home, have a good evening. Sir. No harm, no foul. He ain't hurt nobody. He was sleeping in his car. Yeah. Uh, instead, they want to antagonize. Yeah, and you're like, let me see this. Let me, brother. It's just like you, you know, you. Any, anytime you find a position of power, you no know, power in the wrong hands is a dangerous thing. Come on. Come on. That is a fact. I think we're living in that time right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I appreciate you weighing in on, you know, my awareness segment. It's so important that, you know, awareness is key. At the end of the day, I feel like the more power and knowledge we have, it becomes more of a superpower we have in situations so that we can ma maneuver and guide our way through si certain situations. And so, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and transition out of uh, my awareness segment. And, you know, we're gonna have a little fun, make you think a little bit. And, you know, it's my trading places segment. It's just like Dan Aykroyd, Eddie Murphy, they wake up, everything's switched. Now, you know, uh, Mortimer is, you know, now no longer in the same spot as he was. And so, you know, I take that same concept, we take two iconic people, we swap and we talk about it. And uh, the two people I have for you today is Denzel Washington, trading places with Bruce Lee. Yeah, what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> Question number one is, do you think it'll work? Uh, absolutely. I think, I think they both could do anything they wanted to do. They've proven that. Now, what would one thing be like that'd be different with Bruce Lee being Denzel and Denzel being Bruce Lee? Um, Denzel would probably get even more women that he get. Now he's a fighter and, and, and the women love him already. <laughs> uh, and Bruce Lee being Denzel, same thing. He'd probably get more women as well. 
It's a win, win, win. Do you feel like training day would be different if Bruce Lee was in it? Nah, nah I don't see nobody else doing that role but Denzel, man. <laughs> nobody could have played that part but Denzel. I just don't see it happening. Now, can you see Denzel really, you know, breaking down like uh, uh, all the martial arts and kung fu movies? Nope. <laughs> it's just that, like, I, again, those two, for what they do and who they are, they just they just found their lane, man. I just I, I could never even fathom somebody else doing what those two people were able. I, I don't see it. I don't see it. They were just. That is the definition of greatness in what you've been blessed to do. That is your gift. I don't think you can switch. I know this is a game, but I, I'm just gonna say, I wouldn't want to see it. I, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't want to see it. I don't want them to jeopardize the brand that they have. Now, I would say in the like, uh, what was that movie that came out recently? Uh, they did two of them. Oh man, now I'm now I'm stumbling my words. But you know, I can see a couple of movies where Bruce Lee can definitely, you know, be the badass security guard, bodyguard that goes finds the missing daughter and you know, in a certain role. Take, take it. No, take it. another one. Nope. It had Denzel in it. Uh oh. They had a I, part one and a part two. I'm just oh my lord. Oh well. Forgive me, I forgot. I forgot the name of the movie. Yeah, this will fight a movie, and, and instead of using guns, he's you know he's he's, he's karate and ch chopping people out the way. <laughs> I could I could I could see that potentially happening. I could see that. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So you survived my trading places segment. Now I got my impulse Q and A. And you know the whole idea is you got to answer three questions. You can pass on the question. It's all good. You won't hurt my feelings, but I'm gonna get you with another question. Still got to answer three. And you know, they're from a fan perspective. Mm -hmm. So here we go, question number one. So James, if you were on a 10 hour flight, who would be on the plane with you, dead or alive? And what would the discussion be like? Uh, 10 hour flight. I would want, um, Hmm, that's a great question, man. There's so many that I I just would like to be able to just sit down and have a conversation with. But I would say uh, Barack Obama. Mm. And the conversation would be how to remain honorable in the face of adversity. That would be the conversation. Uh. Okay, okay. Question number two. What is the funniest thing you've seen a kid do? Wow. Um, emulate everything they see. It's amazing. Uh, <laughs> just, I'm on my phone a lot, right? Obviously. Um, my son, I have this old Blackberry that I don't use anymore. He goes and sits at my desk and gets on the phone. And he just, you can see him doing everything that he see me doing throughout the day, man. So I just, you know, it's not, it's funny, but at the same time, it's like, it's a reminder that your kids are watching everything you do. Yes, sir. Everything you do. Facts. No, my son, I'll, I'll be on here and I'll do an interview today with his grandmother. But he'll sit outside the door and like not I wouldn't say mock me, but he's literally saying word for word that I do for my intro. And you know, he does it on his own. He wants his own YouTube channel. And you know, that it's just you're absolutely right. The stuff we do around them, it rubs off them in a positive way or a negative way, depending on what you're doing. Absolutely. You know, I talk crap to, you know, talk crap to my brother, you know, we talk smack back and forth. And then, you know, now I hear my son talking smack to us. He'll come in here and call us a potato head and a box head quick. Yeah, that's a blessing though, man. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, beautiful. Question number three. What is one thing about you that you do every day that you wish could be automated? That I wish what? Could be automated. 
I read my Quran, I read my Bible every day. Like, so you, do you wish it could be automated? Like, you know, uh, you don't have to read it. It just automatically goes into your brain like a transfer file. I, I wish I could live with that all day, every day. I definitely wish it was automated, man. <laughs> that would save me so much headache. <laughs> and, 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 and I have to go to that thing throughout the day. Things come at you and, and, and the devil will try to remind you of your, of your, of your, of your mistakes every day. Um, and you have to go get that word, man, to feed that, to feed that spirit. So if that was automated. Well, I could just click on it when, it, when, it, when they, when the enemy try to come and get you. Yes, that would, that would be a big thing for me. That would be cool. That would no, be cool. I, that's such a powerful answer. Like I've heard people say, oh, I wish they could clean for me. I wish this could do for me. I've never heard say such a powerful answer, you know. The word, the word will get you through more than just a saying. It'll get you through everything. For everything. And we just, again, we, I'm not gonna say we, for me, man, if, if I hate to look back, but I just would have asked someone to put me into that word, not just put me in it, because I always read it. That's the problem. I just never was consistent enough to live by it and believe it. You know what I mean? Like I said, I just, you gotta feed that animal, you know? There's two, there's two animals in us. Like the, the, the GR, the eternal battle is in us every day. And, and we think we feed in the right one, but we not. We listen to certain music, we, we read certain articles, we talk to certain people, we talk about certain things. We're feeding that one that's reminding you just how horrible you are. You know what I mean? Instead of feeding the one that reminds you of your greatness, brother. And that's only what come from the work. Like the, the greatest thing is that is forgiveness, man. So, yeah, if that could be automated, where every time that 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 devil, that enemy, try to creep in and remind me of of yesteryears, uh, that that would be a peaceful thing, man. You know, I, cause I at the end of the day, brother, I just want. I, I understand what rich is, man. Let me just let me leave you with this, if I may. Is the richest man is not the one with the most money in his, in the bank account. It's the one with the most contentment in his heart. Yes. And I've never, I shouldn't say never, I haven't had great contentment over the years because I hadn't been able to resolve my internal issues, right? Um, and and with that, with that internal issue, you hurt a lot of people directly and indirectly that you really didn't mean to, right? You really don't mean to. And so you gotta live with that regret every day of your life if you really have a conscience and a heart. Um, and so that that part of it is, is that word is not just reading it, but applying it. Like we could read books every day, but if we don't actually try to apply it to our life, you, all you did was waste a couple of hours. Come on, That's come it. on. No? It's like, well, let, let me let me just throw this in there because this is big on me because you know, you're a dedicated father, a dedicated dad. I got to make sure I give you your roses, your flowers now because you know, it's important to embrace every parent that's in the industry and you know is able to lay out a foundation and still give the biggest love and you know it's not money it's t-i-m-e it's time and you know i just gotta make sure i give you my flowers for that and you know take my hat off brother and ask you how do you do it it's um i learned to be truthful um it is time but i've learned to be truthful with with, with my kids um you know, i have two older girls from previous relationship and i have two young boys but um, I learned to be truthful about my imperfections and really speak to them in a sense that when they run across it, and they get older and the men that they go out with or what have you. Um, I used to think you could spend five I, I, you could spend five hours with your kids, brother, and they may walk away feeling like you, you've never been there because it's not quality. And you could spend five minutes with them and they remember that forever. It's, 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 it's what you're doing within that time. That And so when I were around my kids, now I speak truth to them. I speak, I, I want them to mean something to me. And, and I just got a, a text from my daughter yesterday. My daughter works with me now, right? And uh, which is one of the greatest gifts in the world, man. We grow up to be able to have our kids, right? But she said to me, I just wanted to tell you, that not only do I love working with you, I'm just so proud to call you my dad. 
and she knows everything I've been through, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, but she sees me not fight it, and she sees me speak the truth, and she sees me honest with her, man. And to me, that's time. To me, that's how you do it, is truth. Lead by example, man. And, and, and so that's, that's, that's how I do it with my kids. Thank you. Because I'm not going to lie, my son hits me. I spend five, six hours with him, and we'll play, but... It's, you're absolutely right. I got to make that time more valuable so it sticks more because he'll hit me an hour later and I'm like, Dad, you're not spending any time with me. Right. It's so important that, you know, that you, you said it perfectly. You have to make the time more meaningful, not not make the length of the time what matters. Yeah, I mean, you can go out, Brad. I, oh, I was with my son all day today. And you remember that, but your son or your daughter remembers none of it because none of it was meaningful. You guys ain't have no nothing that's going help them go to bed with a smile on their face, man. You know, how many times you tell them you love them and, and sat down and said, I, you know, I encourage you. Even, even my son is three, I just like, you know, his name is King, right? And and I just wrote, and so I like, you strong? And I make sure I do that every time we just spend time and he'll be like, like this, right? And, and, and now he goes around doing that. Um, so it's just to me, man, it's just quality. And because I miss that, you know, I didn't have an opportunity to have that um, coming up, like many of us. You know, I didn't have that uh, that opportunity. But um, man, I can I can I can talk about that all day, man. That 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 just it makes me emotional because it's like you want to be so so perfect for your kids, and then when you're not, you feel like you disappointed them so much. Um, I just, yeah, man, I, I, it's just the truth, man. Just, just, just speak the truth to me. Absolutely. No, your children can give you instant gratification where nothing really else can give you instant gratification. And that's, that's important. Yeah. That's it, brother. Uh, you know, I know we're running out of time and I appreciate your time so much. It's the most finite thing we have on this earth. And, you know, I gotta ask, I gotta promote, you know, what are you excited for? What are you working on? You know, let let the viewers know so that you know we can all tune in. We know Fox Soul's programming spreading across the United States. It's not just in LA and the West Coast. It's spreading and spreading. And you know, I love it. I yeah. love it. I just um, you know, uh, Fox Soul. That's that's my. I'm I'm single mindedness when it comes to that, right? Because I feel like it, it, it's just so important. Like we're 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 close to becoming our own cable channel outside of being a digital streaming network as well. Um, and I just literally want to be the platform that people that don't get an opportunity could never get to the other network and come to us, get to me, you know, not that I, you know, get to the people that's, and have a place they feel like they may be able to get their creativity out. And so I'm just trying to build fuck, fuck, fuck so that when I'm dead and gone, that it maintains. That, that to me, this is my last leg. This is, this is my legacy. Like, I don't want it to die when I die. I don't, I don't, I did that, I haven't done anything, you know, honestly. I don't want to doubt like that. No, it's so important to have a legacy and leave something there that people can hold, grab, turn off and on. And, you know, that that is the real blessing of life and what you're able to do. Is, it's, it's not just like generational wealth. It's all about what you can leave that last, that, that, that last and that's the time. Yeah, no, no question. Uh, I just give honor to you, man, for, for, for what you're doing. Um, honestly, there's a lot of podcasts out there. There's a lot of people in that space, right? And one thing I, that has separated you, for me anyway, is the fact that you remind me a little bit of what I see is that you dig in the people who see them. At least you try to go a little deeper than just having a general conversation. So I just encourage you to stay that path, man. It's going, it's going to get bigger for you. It's going, it's going to really, you have a sensibility about you as a gift. Anyone can pick up the mic and talk to me in all sincerity. You just have a sensibility about you, man, that I want you to keep on the like, Keep remembering that. Like, I, I, I see your greatness. I want you to see your greatness every day. Keep doing anything I could do to help Fox Soul platform. 
that you on, talk about what you're doing. Let's, let's, let's make sure we build each other I just, I just want you to remember. See greatness in you. And I'm not coming from me neither, but I sincerely see greatness in you. That's why I want to be a part of it. Because I see what you're doing. I see the Thank you. I honor you as well. You got any questions for me? Nah, I wanted to make sure I said that to you. I wanted to my name is James Dubose. You're tuned in to Contrast Uncut. Listen to me. This is the next big thing in the podcast. All right, brother. Thank you, man. I appreciate you so much.